rejoice, 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 for this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We bid you guys welcomed in God's joy on this Sabbath day. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning worship service. What an honor it is to welcome you and to the sanctuary of the C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am Pastor Jerry Cannon. On behalf of all the officers and members of the church, our associate pastor, Pastor Lanson, our Christian educator, Dr. Carroll, and those ministry leaders, we are glad that you join us today. Merciful God, we thank you that you are our strength. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. Thank you for allowing us to see a new day. Thank you for giving us another day of breath, of life, a portion of health and strength, a renewed mind and a fresh start. Thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that helps us navigate these uncharted waters and live with purpose. Thank you, Holy God, for bringing us through danger seen and unseen. By the power and your provision, oh God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for just being God, oh Lord, all by yourself. Now, oh Lord, we pray that you would help us to persevere. Feed us your word, your rhema word, and bathe us in your revelation and truth. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen comes from Psalm 23, verse 4. It is the CEB version, the Common English Bible version, and it reads, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no danger, because you are with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
This morning, my brothers and sisters, I would like to preach and teach with this sermon title in mind, Lessons in the Valley. Lessons in the Valley. It is often said that life seems to take us through many various seasons. There is a familiar uh, term or familiar word that says at any given time, it seems as if we are either moving into a storm, in the middle of a storm, or, or coming out of a storm. And some of y'all may know what I'm talking about. I must confess, and many of us, we do agree that 2020 has brought many storms our way. Some would say it seems as if we have been walking through the valley for an exceedingly long time. On New Year's Eve, we were inspired and ready to tackle a new vision. In 2020, we had a new beginning. We had set out our plans to pursue those dreams, the goals for our life, but later found ourselves navigating through the darkest valley. Valley experiences have the potential to cause us to fear because it leads us into the unknown circumstances of life. Sometimes we feel as if we have lost control. We have lack of resources. And we are entrenched with situations that trigger our fight or flight response. When we walk through the valley, we run upon situations that cause us to question our safety, our sanity, and our survival. Yes, I would say 2020 has put us in uh, this valley experience. As we were thrusted into grief and loss at the beginning of this year, we honor those who have been lost, and many of those are influential people, and those persons like Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Bozeman, John Lewis, C.T. Vivian, they made a positive impact on our lives and on this world. And as we move through the sor sorrow, uh, celebrating their legacy, we realize that we are in the valley and the valley runs deep. In the valley, we have endured the continuous acts of police brutality. We can say the names of many people who have been killed by police brutality just in 2020. Black and brown men and women have been killed by police brutality, racial profiling, and aggression by some officers between black and brown people. We realize that the valley is wide and it's spanning wide that black and brown people have to be cautious running while black, bird watching while black, shopping while black, sleeping in your own home while black. We seek justice for Breonna Taylor and Jacob Blake. And I will not stop saying the names of those whose black lives matter. Yes, their lives matter. Our lives are consistently under the threat of potential danger in America. And we realize that the valley can be dark. COVID-19 and all that comes with it in the valley is where we are personal struggles in our homes, community, or on our job. It deepens the valley experience. Then the valley of 2020 is filled with toxic rhetoric from a president who denies the pandemic, supports racial discrimination, separates families at the border, and supports police brutality, misogynistic behavior, degradation of humanity, and anything that does not support his agenda. Yes, we are walking through the valley, but with, but with all of this happening right now, God just had me to pause and just declare and think about this one verse that we read this morning, Psalm 23 verse 4, and it reads, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not fear. And the reason why, because God is with us. Barbara Brown Taylor, author of Learning to Walk in the Dark, she says it this way. Darkness is not dark to God. The night is as bright as the day. 
What I want us to hear today is God is working on our behalf even uh, as we walk through the darkest valley. God is shining a light for us to see the will of God. God is directing our paths uh, and teaching us how to make it through, uh, profess in the midst of, uh, go forth in God's glory in the midst of the valley. And that is what I want to talk about today. I think there are some lessons that we learn as we are walking with God through the darkest valley. And the first lesson I want to bring to your mind is uh, the valley exposes what is broken uh, and in need of restoration. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. The valley exposes some areas of our woundedness and sometimes a uh, devastation or toxicity that can only be fully seen uh, when a situation goes sour or a system just literally breaks down. One day, y'all, I was at my girl's school. I went to start my van and it wouldn't start. For about 10 minutes, I sat in the parking lot trying to, trying to figure out why it wouldn't start. I would let it sit for a while. And you know, my husband always says, turn off all the electronics and just let it sit for a minute and then try it again. So I did with no luck. I decided after I talking with my husband for a while and I was trying it over and over again, I said, you know what, I'm just going to call AAA, tow the van to the local, our local mechanic and just see what he says the diagnosis is going to be. After sitting there for a few minutes and y'all know I prayed, I began to pray and I decided that I would just try it one more time. This time I turned the key and it started immediately. But hold on, y'all. That's not my shout. The shout actually happened uh, when I got to the mechanic because I decided to take the van to the mechanic anyway to get it checked out just in case something major was going wrong. The mechanic did a diagnostic and could not find anything wrong with it. The mechanic said, it's a weird thing. It is a weird thing, he said. It starts fine for me. And doesn't that always happen whenever it seems like something's going wrong? It seems like you can't find the issue. But then he said something that really caught my attention. The van has to be dead or not working in order for me to diagnose the problem. In other words, if it is working, the solution cannot be found. But when it's broken, he can pinpoint the problem and give me a resolution. Y'all, God is allowing us to see some things in our world that are broken and have been broken for some time, bringing it to the forefront of our lives so that we might face it, name it, deal with it, and move forward towards healing and restoration. Some marriages, y'all, or relationships have been broken for some time, but this pandemic has brought it to the surface Many have been existing in the home with their spouses for many years, just passing each day by and by. And God is saying, you need to just stop, talk about it, work it out, pray through it, get some counseling, and begin to heal. Some social structures have not been working for some time. Girls, black and brown people, the poor, marginalized, are being oppressed. God is calling the church, the followers of Christ, to speak to the principalities and powers and act for restoration and equality. COVID-19 has exposed the lack of adequate health care and disparities in black and brown communities with high rates of COVID cases due to underlying health conditions. God is saying this too is in need of repair. When children are being separated at the border and sex trafficking is on the rise, we realize that these are not new issues, but they are more apparent now. God is calling these things to the light, and God is not pleased and wants the world to face it and partner with God to bring about transformation. Y'all, then there is the Herod of this day, a president who is destructive in many ways, too much to list at this time. But one thing that happened most recently is banning diversity training. Y'all, God is saying that we have got to go out and make a change in this world. Cast your vote early, y'all. Many systems are broken and in need of restoration and we serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that 
than we could ever ask or think. And it happens through you. James Baldwin says, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. I believe God is calling us to face some things, y'all, and be the by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, cast out some evil powers that are running rampant in this earth. Uh, we have the power and the authority given to us by an almighty God through uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, as John Lewis would say, it's time to get in some good trouble, uh, some necessary trouble uh, for the sake of our future and to be about kingdom work. That's what Jesus did when he began a revolution to proclaim good news to the poor, freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the captives free. Brian Stevenson, executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative, and maybe some of y'all will know him as the writer of Just Mercy. He says it this way, you've got to keep beating the drum of justice. Beat the drum for justice. Y'all, we must keep fighting. Uh, keep fighting by building affordable housing. Shout out to Roof Above who purchased the, the um, apartments. We have to keep fighting to remove food disparities. We have to keep fighting to seek quality health care and education for all. We must keep fighting for justice for those who are wrongly charged and are given longer sentences than others who commit similar crimes. Uh, we must keep fighting to repair and restore an unjust ju ju judicial system. Uh, we must keep fighting to set uh, the captives free. Uh, the movement of change, it happens through us. It happens through your early voting. It happens through filling out the census and working in your neighborhoods to be a part of the solution. Uh, the change happens through us when we are in the boardroom, when we use our voices uh, to speak for the oppressed and the well-being of all people. Uh, the movement happens through you and the movement happens through me. Uh, God is calling these disparities to the forefront, y'all, so that we can face them, so that we can see them, so that we can be about change in this world. Because you know what? Jesus was not silent. Jesus was not silent when the woman at the well was being discriminated against. He said, I have to go to Samaria. Jesus did not remain silent when people were in need of healing. He healed them. So today I ask you, how might God use you to make a difference in this world? The valley exposes the brokenness so that we might partner with God for transformation. Then next, the valley produces strength. Just say strength. Valley produces strength that only develops in low places. There are some things you will not learn in your relationship with God until you have been in a low place until you have walked with Jesus through the valley. I know there's someone out there that knows what I'm talking about. There are certain aspects about Jesus's character and the power of an almighty God that you only learn when you're going through a storm. There are some aspects about Jesus' provision and power that you may not discover until your back is against the wall and your enemies are after you. Uh, the older saints would say, I've tried him and I know that he is an on-time God. Or I've tasted and seen that God is good. Uh, what I'm saying is there is a certain type of strength uh, that you get not from hearing about Jesus, uh, but about experiencing Jesus uh, as you walk through the valley. When you come out with these battle scars and your testimony, this type of strength only comes uh, from wrestling with lions and demons or dealing with the heavy lifting uh, of walking with Jesus in the darkest valley. And I believe that some of y'all out there know what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you don't know, I hope this illustration will help you. Uh, 
In bodybuilding, there is something called training to failure. This is where you do so many repetitions of weights that you physically cannot complete another repetition. The objective is to induce the most possible muscle strength or growth, uh, pushing blood to that area so that your muscles can grow. For someone who has been training with proper technique for multiple years, uh, training to failure can have lots of benefits. Increased strength levels, crushing plateaus, letting the ultimate pump uh, happen to your muscles, and enormous growth uh, and increase in your strength, in your body, and in your mind. Uh, in essence, lifting the heavy weight for a long period of time uh, produces endurance, uh, increases your strength uh, in your body and in your mind. Uh, beloved, I just came to tell you when you press uh, through the heavy lifting of the valley, uh, pressing in your mind and in your spirit, uh, it may seem like you can't handle it anymore, but if you lean on the almighty God, uh, God is only strengthening you uh, in the valley. God is making you better uh, as you go through the valley. Y'all, let me just tell you, the Bible says in James 1 and 2, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, uh, then let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. The valley strength is causing you to be able to persevere through the hard times without giving up. You are becoming a mature follower of Christ. You are becoming stronger and more resilient because Jesus is with you and guiding you all the way. Keep pressing through the valley. Keep pressing through the heartache. Keep pressing through the anxiety. Keep pressing through the fear because God will bring you through uh, right on time. Uh, and if as you keep pressing, this is the result of your pressing. Uh, Romans 5, 3 and 4 says not only that, uh, but we rejoice in our suffering uh, knowing that suffering produces endurance uh, and endurance produces character and character produces hope. Uh, the valley strength is the valley and the valley is producing something in you. Uh, you are being given the ability to endure and your character is being made new. So I ask you as you go through the valley, what new things is God help wanting you to learn? What has God allowed you to encounter that will produce good character in you, not making you bitter, but making you better? Everything you are experiencing now is connected to your destiny. Let me just say that one more time. Everything that you are experiencing even right now is connected to your destiny. God is wanting you to learn the lesson and keep stepping up. Yes, keep stepping up to the higher calling in Christ. Keep stepping up to obtain the prize that God has in store for you. Keep stepping up because God is not through with you yet. God will use all things up for the greater good. Y'all, even in the darkest valley, I will not fear danger because Jesus is with me. The valley makes you better. And let me just show you how the valley has made a couple of people better. We asked Peter, he was cursing people out cut a man's ear off, denied Jesus, and God built his character and used his struggle and his voice to call 3,000 plus souls to Christ and healed and restored captives by his anointing and prophetic voice. Asked the woman at the well, she was bound by a weight of exclusion, oppression, and judgment, but Jesus restored her and she preached her initial sermon to her hometown, and many came to know and follow Jesus because of her voice. Asked Mary Magdalene if she was bound by evil spirits. Maybe it was the way the misogyny, oppression, economic disparity, or discrimination. But Jesus saw her 
freed her and used her for his glory. When you walk through the valley with Jesus, you will find strength for the journey. Your character will be transformed and you will understand that your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. When you walk with Jesus, the valley will not destroy you. It will strengthen you. The valley will not hurt you. It will heal you. The valley will not harm you. It will bless you. If you hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you saturate yourself in the word of the Lord and trust in the Lord with all your heart, you will come out of the valley better than when you went in. Y'all, the valley reveals brokenness to be restored, produces strength, and lastly, the valley produces purpose. Can y'all say purpose or type it in the chat? It produces purpose. As we look at the life of Jesus, we realize the miracles and transformation of Jesus did not happen on the mountaintop. His purpose was lived out in the valley. Let me explain it, y'all. His preparation took place on the mountaintop. When Jesus was baptized, he experienced the mountaintop blessing of baptism. He was claimed as God's beloved, given the favor of God, and anointed by the Holy Spirit to fulfill his purpose and calling. But right after he was called, anointed, and appointed, Jesus immediately was led by the Holy Spirit into the valley of the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. My brothers and sisters, it is the human desire that we remain on the mountaintop of blessing, favor, and anointing instead of experiencing suffering, tempting, and pain. But God gave you the blessing, the favor, the anointing so that you can use it in the valley. God blessed you so that you can be a blessing. God anointed you so that you can cast out oppressive structures. God's favor rests upon you so that you can do the work, fulfill your purpose in the valley. Preparation is given on the mountaintop, but purpose is manifested in the valley. The disciples were prepared on the mountaintop as Jesus taught them about the Beatitudes and other principles to govern themselves as followers of Christ. But then what happened to them? They left the mountaintop experience of teaching and experiencing Jesus and entered the valley as they encountered the storm. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I believe that someone needs to hear this word this morning. Morning. Don't wait until the valley is over. Fulfill your call right now. God has given you everything you need to navigate this here valley experience and do the work of the kingdom right now. Ministry doesn't stop because of COVID-19, to toxic political climate violence or discrimination. God is at work in and through us now ever more than before. God's favor, God's spirit, God's claim on your life and your principles and presence is with you as you fulfill your purpose in the valley. God is calling you to do it even right now. King David wrote this psalm because he knew how God worked in preparing him in his valley experience. God anointed David to be king far before he took the office, but after his anointing, he went into the valley of hatred and consistent murderous attempts by Saul when David was just trying to fulfill his call and do his job. But sometimes, y'all, we have to let haters hate because that's what Saul was, because Saul was a hater. We got to let haters hate because they only help us elevate. Hallelujah. David is a witness because he walked through the darkest valley and God elevated him to another position 
God made him king. He was anointed and appointed and given everything that he needed to navigate the valley because God was with him regardless of what came. God took care of it and God used it for his good. Saul couldn't stop the anointing on his life. God's will for his life was more than Saul's will against him. And y'all, I'm closing this sermon, but I just wonder if there are two or three that will testify with me that God's will for my life uh, is more than any force uh, against my life. Uh, the haters can't stop it. The pandemic can't stop it. The devil showing up can't stop it because God's will will not return void. Uh, his word will always accomplish what he was set out to do. And come what may, I will not throw in the towel. I will not stop hoping. I will not stop serving the Lord. I will trust the power of an almighty God that is at work within me. I believe in the favor of God on my life. I trust the power of Jesus Christ more than I trust the systems and structures that oppress me. And I come out better than when I went in because I'm walking with Jesus and Jesus is talking with me and reminding me of who I belong to. I will not fear. I will not fret because God before me, then can nobody be against me. Not one will be able to overcome me. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not fear because Jesus is with me. Jesus is with me now and forever. And y'all, y'all know what? My testimony will be now and forever. I made it out. I made it out. All right. Y'all can say it with me. Type it in the chat. I made it out. I made it out all right by the power of an almighty God. I made it out. I made it out all right because God helped me move through it. God gave me strength to get through it. God gave me vision to manifest in the midst of it. And God is keeping me even right now. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, can you say, I made it out. I made it out of the valley. I made it out of the struggle. I made it out of whatever it was that's holding me back. We praise God for that word. We thank God for the spirit of preaching as Pastor Lanson so eloquently shared with us this morning. If you are in the valley, do remember what she said, the valley produces. It produces, first of all, strength. Then it gives an exposure. Then it also reminds us of our purpose. And I believe that God has laid a purpose on all of our hearts this morning to become closer to God through the presence of Jesus Christ. For those who desire to be members again, give us a call. Let us know how we can be a part of your spiritual journey. Again, thank you, Pastor Lanson, for the word. Thank you, Dr. Carroll, for being online with us. And thank all of you, all of our members and friends, for engaging with us today. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven shine upon you and the favor of Almighty God be in your life. Y'all have a wonderful week, a blessed Sabbath day. We look forward to worshiping with you on next Sunday.